Hey everybody, Grey Rose here. Today we're going to be talking about layer 2 attacks with Yersinia. We're going to be focusing on dynamic trunking protocol attacks, or DTP. And before we dive into that, I just want to talk quickly about VLANs. There are some people that I've come across that are in the pen testing and red team communities that have a general concept of what a VLAN is, but haven't actually dug deep into what a VLAN actually is. So if you already know about VLANs, take a look at the timestamp in the description where you can skip ahead. But right now we're going to talk real quick about what a VLAN is at a lower level. So a VLAN is something that lets us segregate and segment physical ports on a switch. So in my totally awesome network diagram here, I've got four switches. Each switch has eight ports and we're going to be talking about trunk ports and access ports in just a moment here but you can see in the pink we've got vlan 10 and in the light blue we have vlan 20. what this means is that anytime a packet hits vlan 10 on let's say this port here and it is a broadcast or a multicast packet it needs to go to all other ports on all other switches that were trunked with on vlan 10. it also means that on the same switch and subsequently all other switches, the packet that comes in here, again being a broadcast or a multicast packet, doesn't show up on VLAN 20. And that's pretty much it. Now, when we dig a little bit deeper, what that means is that every time a packet comes into this interface on VLAN 10, the switch will then add a layer 2 header for 802.1Q and say, this packet, or this frame actually, because it's not necessarily a packet, it depends on who you talk to and their, their terminology, but this Ethernet frame now has a tag on it that says, I belong to VLAN 10. So any ports that are not configured for VLAN 10 will not get this packet. Now let's say it's destined for somebody on this host here, or this port, excuse me. As the packet goes down, it'll hit the trunk, it'll go across here, it'll hit this port where it needs to go, and as the packet egresses, the interface and it goes towards the host that it's destined for, the switch will then remove the layer two tag, the 802.1Q information on that because the host that it's connected to doesn't necessarily need to know that it's part of a VLAN. It just needs to know that I've got physical connection. So in doing that, we ensure that we have segregation and segmentation between different devices. So the machines that we plug into these ports are going to be what are called access ports. So I'm only plugging in one machine, I'm plugging in my laptop, I'm plugging in a server or what have you. And to be able to communicate with all the other switches, as you can see with these green lines here, and again the fancy diagram that I've put together, we have what are called trunk ports. Now a trunk port is a port that is specifically designed to carry multiple VLANs on it so that you can have other switches which have the same VLANs in case in this case here we've got a total of four switches so these guys can now talk to one another on VLANs 10 and 20 so the packet that shows up here that again let's say is a uh, an ARP request it's a broadcast packet it's going to show up on these switches and these ports down here because VLAN 10 is trunked to all the different interfaces here and similarly with VLAN 20 as well Right, so everything I've just said about VLAN 10 can be applied to VLAN 20. Now, what is dynamic trunking protocol? Dynamic trunking protocol is a, it's kind of one of those things where people want to use it, but you might not want to use it depending on if you want to use, if you want to have more focus on security or if you want to have more focus on ease of usability. Now I'm a security guy, so I would say that you want to lock this down pretty tightly. But the whole idea is that you can have this port here, let's say, on this switch, if I can highlight just that, and that port is carrying a a trunk, right? A uh, an inner switch link. Um, I don't believe it's an actual ISL as the uh, protocol. We're just talking about 802.1Q trunking right now. But the the concept when I say inner switch link, I, I should probably actually stop using that now that I think about it because ISL is technically another proprietary term. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself. We can set this trunk port up so that it carries the VLANs that we want to. And we know that this port is gonna be plugged into another switch. So we can set this port here without having to do all the, the configuration to set it up as a trunk port carrying VLANs 10 and VLANs 20 and all the other VLANs that we need to add on here. We can just have it auto-negotiate through dynamic trunking protocol, DTP. And from a usability perspective, this is really fantastic because you can just take this interface, plug it in here, and then this port automatically configures itself as a trunk port to carry the appropriate VLANs. 
from a security perspective, that's where we're going to attack it. So in my very basic network that I have set up here, I have two machines plugged into a switch and we'll be taking a look at the switch configuration um, as well for, for the different ports. And I've got VLANs 10 and 20, just like I have on my diagram here, VLANs 10 and 20. And we've got one machine that's on VLAN 20. And what I've done, and, and for those of you who aren't familiar with VLANs, you don't have to necessarily use the same IP schema. Whatever VLAN you have, you can assign it whatever IP range you want. To make things easier, I've created VLAN 10 for 172.17.10.0/24 and VLAN 20 to be 172.17.20.0/24. It's just a little bit easier to keep track of things. Now, I already have one trunk connection with this switch to my upstream ASA, which again knows about VLANs 10 and VLANs 20. And if we go back again to our previous diagram, right? Instead of having this port connect to a switch for redundancy down here, this port is actually just connected to my upstream ASA. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using an attacking machine over here set on port 8 and the port on that is currently set to desirable. So let's jump into it right away. And if we take a look at the switch console and we do show int whoops, trunk, you can see right now the only trunk that we have is fast ethernet 01 that's the one that i have connected to the asa and we're using 802.1q trunking and if we do show run into fa0 slash one you can see how that's set up now what we're going to be attacking from is show run into fa0 slash eight so it looks very similar now you can see here i've set the switch port mode dynamic desirable and what this does again is this puts the port in a desirable mode. Now, over here on the attacking machine, I actually have two windows open for that, one for Yersinia and one that we can run a few commands on here. So if we do a quick if config ETA zero, you'll see we currently have no IP address assigned to it. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna fire we're gonna fire up Yersinia in interactive mode. Press any key to continue. We're gonna hit G to go to and we're going to go to the dynamic trunking protocol module and almost immediately it's able to pick up on the DTP configuration or the DTP uh, information being sent out so again if we do show run FA0 slash 8 oh show run int FA0 slash 8 again you can see that the switch port mode is set to desirable that picked up right away and again if we do show int trunk we only have fast ethernet zero one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna press X to execute an attack and we're gonna enable trunking. We're just gonna hit the number one. And again, almost immediately, we're gonna see the line status go down and then back to up. Now if we do show int trunk, we now have on fast ethernet zero eight, a trunk. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what does this get us? All we've basically done is said to the switch, right? Now, assuming that this is the switch, we've basically said that we're now a switch. We're plugged in to a trunk port. And again, some people might say, really, what does this get us? So for, as an attacker, let's take a look at some of the passive recon that you can do, right? So if we do TCP dump, Just by plugging in and running a packet capture, we're going to be able to find out some information. We get STP, we are going to see uh, LLDP, we are going to see CDP if that's enabled on the switch port. There's a lot of really good information that we can pull passively. Now, the only information or the only trigger that will be seen, and unfortunately that console log is going to be lost on this tab, is the line up line, or sorry, the line down line up that we saw when we initially enabled trunking. So the only thing that's going to show up in the logs if people are using a SIM or a SIEM uh, or whatever it is that they're using is that a new device was plugged in. Now, depending again on who runs the logging for the security, what sort of um, alerting they have, are people going to pay attention to this? If it's a large enough, large enough excuse me, organization, maybe they won't. Maybe they just won't see that something got plugged in. Now, when we're plugged in as a trunk, we will still be able to see some client information on some of the VLANs. So we're gonna do ARP, only ARP. 
Now, because I only have one other box plugged in there, whoops, so it seems like we got kicked out of the SSH session. Okay, so this is our target box here, 172.17.20.100. So again, we that's this guy right here. Now we don't, from the attacker side, we don't have any access to that because again, we don't have an IP address. But what we can do, if we do an ARP-NA, ARP-D, we're gonna do 172.17.20.10. We're gonna do that a couple of times. And now, if we go back to our TCP dump on the attacking side, here we go. We can see some information. Now, as a red teamer, as a pen tester, as a threat actor who is hopefully watching this video and acting on contract, not just trying to break into stuff, what does this tell us, right? We can take a look at this information. We know for a fact that there is a device at 172.17.20.100. That's 100% guaranteed. We know that this is its MAC address. We can do a MAC address lookup uh, based on the vendor OUI, which are the first three hex tests. If whoever it is that runs this device hasn't changed it, we can get information about the hardware. We can see that there are 802.1Q headers or frames attached to the Ethernet frame. We can tell that it's on VLAN 20. So we know that VLAN 20 has something on this network range. Now, again, it doesn't give us the exact subnet, but it will tell us that we've got a device on 172.17.20.100, and it's looking for somebody at .10. So there is some information that you are going to be able to get of hosts if you look for multicast or broadcast traffic. This includes things like NBNS. Uh, it will include ARP, obviously we just saw that. It will include a lot of IPv6 information for MDNS. Um, there's, there's a lot of really good information that you're going to be able to get as a red teamer just on doing this passive information recon. But let's say you want to go further. Let's say you want to, you, you just don't want to look at stuff. You want to get on that network, right? You, you're, you're now at the point in the contract or the engagement or whatever you want to call it, that it's time to attack things. How do we attack something on VLAN 20? Well, based on the recon and the enumeration that we've done, we know that there's a box at 172.17.20.100. How do we get access to that? Well, what we've done is we've told this switch that we are also a switch. So the port that we're plugged into being a trunk port is expecting VLAN tags. It's expecting 802.1Q information inside the layer two header. So why don't we just tell it that? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to first off learn how to type uh, 802. So you want to make sure that 802.1Q is loaded into your module or your running kernel as a module. I think I have to have some more coffee. All right. So with that, we're going to run vconfig, which is VLAN config, kind of like IF config. Uh, add ETH020. So this tells the kernel that I want you to add onto Ethernet 0 VLAN 20. Now, if we do if config ETH0.20, there's a new interface there. Now, there is a difference between ETH0.20 and ETH0 colon 20. If you see the dot between the physical and the logical, that means that it's a VLAN. If there is a colon character, one of those guys, then it's a sub interface and there are no VLAN tags applied to it. So that being said, we now have to turn that interface up. So you can do it through if config or you can do IP link uh, set. Is that it? There we go. I often use ifconfig or ifconfig, however you want to pronounce it. So it took me a moment there to figure things out. And now what we can do is we can see if there's a DHCP server on that network. And lo and behold, there is. So now we're on VLAN 20. So what we've done is we've plugged into this trunk port. We've added VLAN 20 to our interface and now anything that we send into this port here will go to VLAN 20 across the entire switching infrastructure. 
what's really good about this is if we do not have PVLAN, let's so private VLANs in use, that means that we should be able to access all the devices on that specific layer two domain. We can now do things like man in the middle six. We can use um, uh, NTLM Relay X. We can just port scan stuff if there's no network access control on uh, on the network. Uh, there are a lot of things. Now we are literally in the same room as our victim over here, our victim console, right? So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of information as to what VLANs are, how we can abuse dynamic trunking protocol and get on a specific VLAN should we be plugged into a port that is either a trunk or has a native VLAN set. And we'll, we can talk about that probably in another video as well because this is getting to be a bit of a long one. So anyways, as I said, I hope you found it very helpful, very informative and Happy hacking, everybody.